This is Red Carpet Flies News on the Fly, bringing you daily unique and interesting entertainment, celebrity, and luxury news. Before we get started, you know what to do. Like, follow, and subscribe to Red Carpet Fly and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single News on the Fly episode. Happy Tuesday, guys. Let's get this show on the road and hop right into these headlines. Julia Roberts wants to help Real Housewives star Garcelle Bouvet find a boyfriend. This story is funny to me because Julia Roberts really keeps a low profile in Hollywood and you really don't see her out and about unless she's promoting a movie. Anyway, this past weekend, Julia Roberts and Garcelle Bouvet attended the History Talk 2022 event in Washington, D.C. Apparently, Julia Roberts is a big Housewives fan and is looking to play matchmaker and find Garcelle a man. When asked if there's anyone she had in mind, Roberts replied, No, but I'm going to be thinking about it all day, reports Entertainment Tonight. It's so funny to me because I just never expect celebrities to be fans of the Housewives franchise. I guess because you just don't expect it, right? Anyway, I hope Julia finds Garcelle a good one. So get this. Charlize Theron believes she has trouble getting projects made because she's not at a Kim Kardashian level of fame. Can you believe it? Charlize Theron, the lady that played in Monster, Mad Max, The Devil's Advocate, Snow White and the Huntsman. Do I need to go on? According to IndieWire, the actress states, I feel like I'm at a place where it is what it is. The actress said, working more isn't going to change my level of fame. In a new recent interview with Harper's Bazaar, the actress explained that she doesn't feel that she's reached the apex of Hollywood stardom and opened up about the business opportunities that may have cost her. She states, It's always just been a mediocre ride. I've never been one of those people that's at a Kim Kardashian level, but I feel like it's just always been this thing. She noted that it has become increasingly difficult for her to find financing for movies that she wants to make. The Mad Max Fury Road star believes that it's partially attributable to the decline in fame and partially a result of the industry evaluating pitches more on criteria than just star power. I will say back in the day, it used to be like, You want to have some of this fame so you can go and make the shit you really want to make, she said. But now it's like, I pitch it all day long, and people are like, no thanks. And I'm like, I guess that's not cash in the bank anymore. And it's nice. It's nice that you're making things on the merit of how good they are versus this idea of like, oh, you are in this thing, and we want to be in the business of that thing. Theron, who will be in the sequels of Fast 10 and The Old Guard 2, isn't resting on her laurels. The star said she remains motivated to continue working and is using her platform to improve conditions for young actresses who are just launching their career. There's a natural fight in me to want to create environments that feel like the things I wish I had 30 years ago when I started, she said. Is this, like, shots fired? I feel like this is a low-key slash high-key dig at Kim Kardashian, and in fact, all reality TV personalities, and TikTok slash YouTube and Insta-famous celebrities. I have two thoughts on this. One, I'm like, damn, if it's hard for her and she's famous, it'll probably be damn near impossible for me to reach the pinnacle of my career. And two, you think your career has been mediocre? Really? Not everyone has access and can date Sean Penn, okay? And I'm not trying to relegate her success or define her success by the men she dates. I'm just trying to show you the type of circles she floats in. When they were an item, right? When Sean Penn and Charlize Theron were an item, they attended some movie premiere. Like, I can't even remember what movie it was, but it was in downtown LA. And you wanna know where my ass was standing? I was standing all the way out by the media check-in tables, watching while all the big outlets like Entertainment Tonight, E! News, and people walked by me because the PR firm at the time thought I didn't have a big enough following to cover the red carpet. And while she was walking down that mediocre, barely noteworthy movie premiere, I was just clamoring outside the velvet ropes just to get the opportunity to ask one question. So I really think it's all about perspective, right? Charlize, to me, is too famous to be giving out or emitting this sort of jealous energy. And maybe it's not jealous energy, but that's how it's coming off as. Kim is very recognizable and she is famous, but she pulls a certain crowd. And my question to Charlize would be, is that the kind of crowd you're going after? I really never considered them in the same lane. And I think what's going on here is that now there are more ways to get famous. You don't have to go through the 
gatekeepers, so to speak. And I feel like that has some celebrities in their feelings. And I'm glad that the access to Hollywood fame is becoming more equitable now. But I feel like Charlize shouldn't feel like this. And again, it's all about perspective, right? I just think, one, you need to stay in your lane because what is for you is for you. And two, don't be threatened by new and disruptive talent. And before y'all at me, I don't care how you feel about Kim or the Kardashian clan, but you can't deny that their rise to fame has been disruptive in the fact that it's not the traditional way people get on in Hollywood. The way that Kim got famous is not usually the way people get famous in Hollywood. And also, just be happy for what you have achieved and where you are. Charlize would have really hated standing outside the premiere like me looking at her walking on the carpet. And I know this is easier said than done because I too suffer from professional jealousy sometimes. And I'm not even a jealous person really. But I do get the career green eyes sometimes and wonder why I'm not as successful as other people in my field. And I know I work hard, you know? But... Again, what is for me is for me, and what is for Charlize is for Charlize. It takes a lot of work to quiet your mind and just focus on your stuff. What do you guys think about what Charlize is saying? Is she hating, or did I read too much into this? Or does she have a point? Comment below and let me know. So anyone who knows me already knows that Sunday night is House of Dragon night in my house. I have already stated many, many, many times that I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. Well, I just read this article that accuses the hit show of queer baiting. Do you guys know what that is? Well, for those of you who don't, I will tell you. According to Google, queer baiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which actors hint at, but then do not actually depict same-sex romance or LGBTQ representation. And this is done a lot in Hollywood. I actually feel like a lot of female rappers do this, but that's another topic for another day. So Emily Carey, who plays the young Alison Hightower, addresses the queer baiting claims. According to IndieWire, the actress denies that the show ever tried to manipulate viewers about Alison and Rhaenyra's relationship. Millie Alcock, who plays the young Rhaenyra, and Emily Carey, who plays the young Alison Hightower, have earned praise for their performances as the young queen and heir to the Iron Throne, but their characters have also been the subject of speculation. Many fans have noticed that the close relationship between the young girls seemed to border on the romantic side, with some accusing the show of queer baiting by showing an LGBTQ connection without fully committing to making the characters gay. In an interview with Variety, Carrie acknowledges that she was involved in conversations about the characters potentially having romantic feelings for each other, even if the more nefarious claim of queer baiting are misguided. She states, I mean, we kind of started that discourse. We were in the rehearsal room. I believe it's episode four. I was on the bench. It's not necessarily something we had talked about yet. We were doing that scene and Millie and I looked at each other. It kind of felt like we were about to kiss. It was really weird. And so we talked about it. Carrie added that the young ages of the characters meant that the decisions about their romantic and sexual feelings were not necessarily a binary choice. She continues, Being a queer woman myself, it is something that I was conscious of. But I wasn't consciously putting it out there, she said. They are 14-year-old girls. They don't even know the difference between platonic and romantic. They don't even know what the words mean, let alone what the feelings mean. While the actress ultimately denied claims that the show deliberately suggests that the characters were romantically involved, she doesn't see an issue with fans choosing to interpret the relationship that way. She states, we didn't intend to play it. We weren't making them gay or queer baiting or anything like that, she said. It's just, if you want to read into it and see it like that, do it. If you want to see them as more than friends, do it. If you don't, then don't. You know, the writers of these shows are very intentional, so if they wanted to make them, Rhaenyra and Alicent, lesbians, I think they would have been very intentional in communicating that because they do already have homosexual relationships on the show that aren't ambiguous at all. Sometimes I think people just see what they want to see. I also think that sometimes people are so homophobic that they will see any little thing and call it gay. Like for instance, when I was younger, I would walk arm in arm with my homegirl and I never thought that was gay or queer or anything. It wasn't until my best friend brought it to my attention one day while we were walking through the mall that us walking arm in arm could be interpreted as us being a lesbian item. And I was blown away because I know I loves me some men's and I know she loves her some men's. So I was confused on how people would get that idea. I don't do that anymore, except with my sister. But 
it did leave an impression on me because I'm like, damn, I can't even walk in the mall with my friend without people thinking I'm gay. My takeaway is that people are going to see what they want. Another instance is that I never introduced my extended family to any of my boyfriends. Not by choice, it's just that the relationships never made it to that level. But anyway, my extended family has never seen me with a boyfriend and I started to hear rumors flying around saying that I was gay because they never seen me with a man, which isn't true. It just goes to show how people will take away from a situation what they want to take away from it. I never thought this about the young Rhaenyra or Alicent, but I like how Emily Carey responded and said, take away from it what you will. I don't think the show is queer baiting at all. Some things are just innocent. Are there any House of Dragon fans out there? What do you guys think about this? I kind of think this is a non-story, but I had to share it since it was regarding the House of Dragons. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. If you'd like to receive text notifications of when I post news on the fly episodes or my celebrity red carpet interviews, please send a text to 917-502-4379 and say, I want to get fly text. Once subscribed, you'll start receiving text messages regarding a news on the fly episode or celebrity interviews. Also, if you have a business product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like for me to promote on my channel, please email redcarpetfly at alexi at redcarpetfly.com to get rates for advertising. We're growing, guys. You can also find this podcast on Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio podcast platforms. Just search for Red Carpet Fly's News on the Fly podcast. Lastly, Please like, follow, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel, Red Carpet Fly. And also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Red Carpet Fly. And until tomorrow, always stay fly.